I've built a few Gauge 1 live steam locomotives so far. This is the next one I'm going to build and it's going to be scratch built and it's going to be live steam and I hope you find the series of following videos interesting to watch. Hello and welcome to part 8 of the Gauge 1 GWR Prairie Tank scratch build. Um, as you can see here these are the main components of the cylinder block that, we, that I've done so far and the next thing I've done now is what we're on to now is the slide valve. Is I've marked out the slide valve. Oh, the camera is picking that up very well. But what I have to do now is cut a mill, a recess inside here for the slide valve to work on the faces of the cylinder block. Here's a close up for you now of the slide valve set up in the machine, ready to start. And there we are now with the two slide valves with their recesses milled out. And you notice I also put a slot in the top, like that, and also just trimmed back these edges. This is the space, this is the slot that the rod will fit in. I've made the rod now that I've mentioned a couple of times for the um, for the slide valve. That valve opens and closes the ports. Even though I've given this uh, quite a smooth machining, it really needs lapping now to be totally smooth so we get a nice contact between that surface and the surface of the slide valve. This is the uh, lapping paste we use and you, you mix it, it comes in powder form and you just mix it to the consistency of mustard really and it looks very similar to mustard so you just mix it with a little drop of oil and then pop it down on the plate and what I've found is the best thing for lapping is I bought a piece of glass, quarter of an inch thick and this is a very smooth surface and this is the surface that we'll do our lapping against. So put a little dab of uh, lapping paste down like so. Take our cylinder through these port faces here and it's now a case of just lapping this surface and what we do is we do it in figure of eight so with a steady figure of eight movement you get an even even lapping and I know if the camera's picking this up but you can see the colour of this paste change it's gone like dark now it's obviously gone dark because you can see the bits of uh, brass that it's picked up that it's smoothed off so just a figure of eight like that but you can see slightly different shades on here now where some of these high spots are being lapped down so this has got to be perfectly smooth perfectly smooth finish and flat to get a tight seal after a few minutes it's just this little section along here it's obviously still a little bit lower than the rest of it we now see nearly probably 90 percent of the surface has gone this nice dull dull color where this is all perfectly flat well i think i hope you can see the difference there between the two uh, let's bring it over here so you can see yeah you can see quite clearly this is the one that's now lapped you see this is now a nice smooth surface. It's gone dull, I can tell it's all been lapped smooth. And by contrast you can see the other one um, that I've got to do next. We've got the, the front cover here 
And we've also got to make the back cover. And that is a little more complex than just a simple plate that goes over the back. Uh, so what we're going to have is going to look something like you know, the plate there, so that's the shape of it. I draw it that way. We've got the and that sort of shape. Now if there's a hole goes through there for the piston rod. And we've got some mounting holes here because what fits on here is the guides for the crosshead. As in there like that. So this is this is going to present its challenges. On the drawings they show this all done as one piece. Um, I've learned well my experience in the past I've made this as a separate piece because this has got to be exactly half an inch 500 thou, it's got to be exactly 0.5 for these guides because what fits on here as I mentioned are the slide valve or the crosshead guides, these come out these will come out like this something like that So these have got to be that gap, that distance, and that have got to be exactly the same. So we need to take quite a bit of care on getting this right. And also, obviously, when this is mounted on the front of the cylinder, this has to be exactly right at the uh, you know right angles of perpendicular. You can't afford to have any skew on this again. Um, the It will bind because what goes in here there's the crosshead. You've probably seen, I'm sure you've all seen this piece that fits in here and it slides backwards and forwards and that goes off to the conrod and the piston fits in there and this goes backwards and forwards. Here's the progress so far on the end cap uh, that goes on the cylinder block. And so this is the piece where the slide valves, where the um, crosshead goes backwards and forwards. And you can see what I've done, I've turned a, a blank a piece of brass there at the moment as our starting point. Still in the process of fabricating this. But so there's where the slide valves go. This has got to be brought down to the right thickness and shaped and will ultimately go on the end of there. The uh, the last piece um, for the for the slides and you can see this is an eighth square piece of steel and really just got to pop that into the drill chuck and really with a file just file that round to an eighth diameter so I can get a thread on it. So it's basically a case of, so with this piece of square piece of metal in here and a little bit of brute force to file this round the right diameter to get a 5BA thread on here. So this is the next thing I'm going to do now. Starting off with a large file. Then working onto a smaller, smoother file. Just check that dimension, that diameter. So we can take that out, pop that in our vise. And here it is now all threaded and need just a case of tightening this and I've made these a real tight fit as these are components that ultimately I do not want to start to come loose and start causing problems and slopping about so it's a fairly tight thread uh, which is what I've done
their end caps on now. Both ends. Probably the last thing to do on this side of things is to finally uh, make the piston. And that's going to be made from this piece of phosphor bronze bar here to make the actual piston itself. And I shall be using this to make the rod. Right, here's our little blank of phosphor bronze. Can't take very heavy cuts off this. So I've got to get this down to the wood very, very gently. And it's only really held on on the thread, a little bit of thread in here. So it'd be quite easy, too much force to shear this off. Uh, the other thing I've done is now turned the piston down to which is virtually to virtually the diameter of the cylinder. At the moment it's more or less exactly the same size. As we're so close, probably the, the easiest way now is really just to polish this down just to below size. Just try that again, add more to come off. But with this being um, phosphor bronze being quite a, a soft material, you don't have to press very hard to uh, take it off. Just try that again. Cut a little recess in here. And the, the recess will be take one of these. These are the o-rings and they will just fit in the groove that I'm going to cut and just make a nice steam tight seal. So we just go in very very gently. Right there's our groove, our recess cut to the width of the o-ring and the idea is this is held on tight, it's a bit like an elastic band. So this gets forced over onto there and is held in tight. But the next thing to do now is just to take off this excess just to give us the right width. This is held in, as I say, this is held in quite tight like an elastic band now. So we can just skim this down, just rub this down. And what I'm going to do now is just remove this excess part of the gasket of the o-ring. You can see now after a little bit of sanding that this has quite a lot of the material to come off here and it's just slightly oversized. So after a little bit of polishing just in there now just on the just slightly larger than the piston. So this goes in. Just ease it in. And it's just a nice just a nice smooth fit like that. Here's the cylinder assembled now. All with the components in and the valve at the top and our piston and that's a bit of a push fit. Well, it's not tight, but it's there's certainly a, a resistance there, and that's okay because that'll wear in over time. So what I'll do, just to show you what it what it runs like, at the moment, also I've not put any gaskets in here on these joints, so there will be probably air escaping, and that wouldn't surprise me. So that's running, uh, that's running quite smoothly. That so that's that's pretty good.